all right so let's have a look on the project that we are going to build in this course so we are presented with the login screen here if let's say if we want to sign up a new user let's click on the sign up and we can sign up a new user here let's sign up maybe a new user let's say john last name will be do and email we can give let's say john at the rate john com password one two three four five sign up so once we sign up we can log in okay so let me click here on login and here let's log in with john so basically we need to provide email and the password login and once we log in we can see what all different users we have and we can chat with okay so let me log in here also so let me pick any of the users uh let's pick uh maybe ramesh okay yeah let me log in here as a ramesh ramesh at the rate ramesh.com and password will be one two three four five log in okay there you go so we have our application open in both of the browser here we want to chat with uh ramesh okay so we are here logged in as a john and here i'm logged in as a ramesh so let me chat with john okay so let's send a message from here uh hi hi ramesh how are you if i click on send boom there you go you can see you can see we sent a message and and this this person received a message in real time this is so awesome okay now from here we can reply to this this john do okay so ramesh can reply to john do let's say i am good and let's send it and boom there you go i sent it and here i can receive the message in real time we can also see the timestamp when this message was sent or received all right so this is the application that we are going to build we have real time one to one communication going on here finally i can click on this log out button to log out so this is a simple application that we are going to build all right so before we go ahead and start using graphql let's first understand what is graphql and why we need graphql on the first place okay so let's start uh, so let me define first what is graphql so graphql is a query language for your api or in simple terms graphql is basically an alternative to rest api so if i say this statement that means that there are some of the problems with rest api which basically graphql solves it that's why we use graphql so there are two problems mainly with the rest api one is overfetching and one is underfetching these two problems graphql solves it okay so let's understand about these problems in a detailed way so what used to happen in the rest api is let's say from the client if i make a request i'm making a request i'm telling my server that hey server give me the details of user which has this id one two three and server is sending me all the details okay but let's say in client i do not want all these details okay i want only first name and last name that's it okay but still uh, servers uh, sending me these all the extra details which i do not need on the client okay let's say on the client i want to show only first name and last name that's it i do not want email and password password so graphql is sending me all the details okay this problem we call it as overfetching we are getting the details which we do not need on the client okay now this problem we can easily solve it using rest api also what we could have done is we could have created a separate api uh, which basically gives first name and last name only but that will that will not be a efficient way to solve this problem right if we do it this way then we will end up with creating so many apis so that's not the efficient way so let's see how graphql solves this problem so what will happen in case of graphql when you will make a request 
to your graphql server you will mention that hey graphql server give me the details of user which has id 123 and give me only the id and first name that's it okay in the client we want to show only an id and id and the first name that's it so whatever fields i want i am mentioning while making a request and graphql server what it will do it will just give me those details that i have asked that's it so graphql solves this overfetching problem very easily this way okay this is the problem number one that graphql source that was overfetching let's go to now next problem so next problem we call it as underfetching now let's understand what is this underfetching so what happens is let's assume that you have this web page okay and here you want to show some details of the user and here you want to show a what all post that user has created so for this what you do is from the client you first get the user detail so to get the user detail you make a api call okay and then server gives you all the user detail for example server gives you uh, the name and the email and then once you get the user detail you make another api call to fetch all the post that user has created okay so here what you are doing is basically here you are making two api calls why you are making two api calls because this user is a separate entity entity is nothing it's just type you can think of it and post is a separate entity that's why here you are making two different api calls two api calls basically okay this problem we call it as under fetching okay uh let's see how graphql solves it now okay so what graphql can do it it can get all the details in one single api call that's that uh, this way we are also optimizing our application also okay so instead of making this two api call if we use graphql what we could do is we could get all the details in one go in one single api call okay so let's say here this is the sample query that we can write to get all the user detail that we need for example first name last name and here let's say we want uh post post and here we want post name or uh, description we can mention what all things we want from the post okay that's a sample query don't worry about this query we, we are going to learn the syntax in a great detail but you can get all the details in one go in single api call instead of making two api calls so these are the two problems which graphql mainly solves one is the uh, overfetching and one is the underfetching all right now let's understand the difference between rest api and graphql api in terms of architecture so what used to happen in rest api let's say from the client uh, we make a request to get all the details of the user so that's a get request right so what we, we used to do is we used to uh, write api on our server side to handle that get request okay similarly let's say from the client if we want to send some data or I want to post some data to my server. Then we used to write a respective API to handle that post requests. Similarly, if we want to update data, we used to write a API to handle those put requests. And similarly for the delete also. Okay, so we have different kind of API on our server in case of REST API, which handle different kinds of requests. Okay, this was the architecture, or I should say the way how we write our apis in case of rest api but this graphql api it works little differently okay what will happen in case of graphql whether in client you want to get data or you are posting data or deleting data from the client you will always make a post request that will be always post okay and the route will be on there will be only one route to handle that that will be either slash or slash graphql whatever you want to give that route a name but there will be only one route that will handle all the requests okay whether you want to uh, get the data update the data delete the data so that's the architecture in case of graphql api this is how graphql api works okay and let's say you want to test your rest api okay in that case we use a tool called as postman to test the rest api okay to test basically our endpoint similarly in case of graphql to test our graphql api we use a playground we have a tool we call it as playground 
So GraphQL provides us a playground where we can basically test our APIs. So we will learn about these things in much more detail in this course. All right. So now I would like to explain here a few of the terminologies that we have in GraphQL so that you can get a very clear idea before you write the code. All right. So uh, we have these different things in GraphQL. We call it as query, mutation, schema, resolver. What all these different things are? Let's understand one by one. So what is this query? Now think of this query as a, uh, as a get request in case of REST API. So whenever you want to get some data from your GraphQL server, you basically query it. Okay, yes. So here I have written a typical uh, syntax for query. So this is how your query looks like. So, okay, you write here query keyword. Okay, and then you give a query a name. You can give any random name. Okay, that you want to give to this query. And then you use these brackets and here what you want to query that you will write here. So for example, I have written here users. So what are different things you can query that you can check in your schema? Yes, that you can check in your schema. So this is the schema that we have here. Okay, now if you will look in our schema here, it has something called here, it has type called query and it has something called as users. So by looking into our schema, we can get to know what all different things we can query. Okay, yes. So here, for example, I have queried this users and here I want ID, first name, last name, email of all the users. So this is the typical syntax for your query. Now, don't worry. We will be, uh, you know, learning about the syntax in upcoming videos. But, but for now, I want to give an idea of how it looks like. Okay, so that you can have a little confidence before you start writing the code. Okay, yes, that's what that was about query. Now let's talk about what is this mutation. Okay, so whenever you want to create, update or delete data on your server, that we call it as mutation operation. Okay, and whenever you want to get some data from your server, then we call it as query operation. Okay. Whenever we want to create, update, delete data, we call it as mutation operation. So this mutation is basically think of it as a, you know, a, a post update and delete API in REST APIs. Okay, think of mutation that way. So this is a typical syntax for mutation. Here we write mutation keyword and then we can give any unique name. By the way, this name is optional. Okay, here in this query, this we have given here get all users this is optional but it's recommended to give a unique name so here in mutation also after writing mutation we give it a unique name okay and then obviously we want to create update or delete data so we have to pass some data also here so here we have created this user new which is a query variable okay this is a object so whenever we will call this mutation we will pass this user new object or i should say a variable Okay, yes, and then again here we are basically assigning this user new variable to this user new and then here what all things we want once the user gets signed up. So here we have written those fields that we want once the user signs up. Okay, so this is a typical syntax for mutation. Now do not worry about this. We are going to learn about the syntax. In upcoming video just get an idea of it how this mutation query or mutation operation looks like okay yes so this name is up to you you can give any name but this name that we have written here this you have to look on the schema that what all things you can mutate and this name accordingly you have to write it here okay yeah so uh, let's come to schema okay so schema is basically uh, it has basically a snapshot of uh, the data which your application is going to have. It, it, it contains all the different types and it basically has uh, what all things you can query, what all things client can query, what all things client can mutate. Basically, it has all those details. The schema basically is a snapshot of the data which your application is going to have. Okay. Now, what is this resolver? Resolver is the person who resolves these queries and mutation. Suppose here, 
client wants to get all the users this query will be resolved by this person resolver so here this is the typical code for resolver here so resolver is an object and here which thing we want to resolve we want to resolve query which query we want to resolve we want to resolve users here so and that will be a function so whatever function return that will be sent as a response to the query or mutation okay so here this function is returning all the users so that will be sent as a response okay so these was this was about query mutation schema resolvers so don't worry too much about this right now in upcoming videos we are going to learn these all things from scratch so this query and mutation we execute these operation from our client side and to our and on our server side we create this schema and resolvers so these two things we create on our server side okay that is on our graphql side and these two things we we execute this query and mutation from our client side